thank you nandana and uh, uh as you know i am nikita the hydro trainer okay so i have um, 11 years of experience in total the last four years being in Hadu uh, initial experience was all in Java okay. so I work for a reputed company uh, right now I'm in India and uh, uh, you know, I am leading the project a uh, Hadu project and I'm also a part of the training and placement tree okay so this is all about myself so I'll be taking the demo today the main aim of today's class is uh, for you guys to understand, you know, uh, the pace, okay, whether uh, you are able to, uh, you know, uh, understand what I really mentioned and also uh, the various components, okay, that we are going through this entire course, okay, will be discussed today. So a bit of introduction to big data followed by various components that we are doing as a part of this course and how we are doing this course and all this stuff. Any point of time you have any queries you can stop me either through the chat or you can unmute and talk. Okay, so shall we begin? Okay, so what is big data? Nandana and Jitendra, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So just a basic question, uh, what is big data? Any answer? Big data is something like uh, unstructured data, uh, in uh, which, is, which is more in volume and uh, velocity and uh, volume velocity and uh, it is variable like okay so yeah uh, you are correct but it is not only unstructured data okay so if I go with the very simple term correct Nandana what you said is exactly correct but uh, you mentioned it as unstructured data but you know, uh, first of all, big data is that data which is large in volume, okay? So forget about type of data. First of all, it is that amount of data which is very huge. Okay, so when you say very huge or a lot of, uh, you know, very big in volume or uh, some measure, we, you, we need to give some measure, right? You, we just can't say, with, with, okay, big data is large volumes of data, fine. What is the measure? beyond what limit you call it as data. So you will have some measure, right? So, okay, let us let us try to understand that also. Before going to the measure, first of all, as you can see in the slide, the, uh, it says it is used since 1990s only. Why since 1990s? Is it like we didn't have large volumes of data before 1990s? No, right? We had data all the time. All the time data was always there. Then why? Why big data is being used? The term is used since 1990s. Okay, the reason is, as you, you know, as you all know, the data gathering devices are becoming cheaper day by day. Right? When I talk about data, that data that is which is digital, which we collect, if we don't collect the data, how you how you really can term it, right? So, okay, the term that describes large volumes of data is big data. But since it is being gathered by information gathering devices, which are becoming cheaper since 1990s, that is the reason. Okay, so how the devices like, you know, information sensing devices, especially the mobile phones, the remotes, the software clocks, the cameras, microphones, wireless, everything in, you know, um, Many devices, C cameras. Previously, it was like some uh, ten years before, a CC camera was only there in you know banks wherein we keep the lockers. But nowadays, you can easily order CC camera and get it in all rooms in your home. Correct. So not only you can put it in a backyard, 
okay, for security purpose. Now, and they are very cheaper. And they are very cheaper. What is this AC camera? It is gonna, um, it is gonna capture information 24 by 7, correct? Okay? So all the 24 hours. So where does this information go? Always, do you want, don't want to capture the data? Right? You don't always prefer deleting the data, right? Do you prefer, you have a lot of images on your mobile phone, do you prefer deleting them once the memory is full? No. Always you prefer to save the data. Right? So where should all this data go? We have to, okay, what is the capacity? You have the capacity. Previous, you know, 10 years before or some 15 years before, we had mobile phone that has, you know, only a dialing pad and a calculator feature. And the memory was very limited. It can save up to 250 contacts information only. Before that, even, it was even lesser than that. So what if you have contacts more than 250? You need to take a backup, right? But nowadays, do you have any such restriction? In the same amount, say if you are paying some 10,000 INR, it is like you get a fourth, which is almost, you know, very big and which had only a calculator and a dialing pad, right? So, but nowadays, you get a, you know, with the same amount of rupees, you get a smartphone. What is a smartphone? Wherein you can install a number of apps. If you can see, when you install any app, you know, you get a number of parameters. Uh, the app tells you, you want, it want access to some information like gallery, contacts, and all this stuff. So one app, okay, is equal to, you know, is, in you know, one app is taking so much information and you can add, install hundreds of apps in each moment and there are millions of users. So where, is, where all this data is going? You need some database, right? So the traditional systems, okay, now I'll give one more definition for big data. I'll say big data is that much amount of data where the traditional systems are unable to store and process efficiently. Traditional systems means I'm talking about RDBMS. Correct? So RDBMS where it fails or you know um, we storing and processing of the data where RDBMS is the challenge. That that limit, above that limit I'll call it as big data. So, so now I can call, big, I can give one more definition. Big data is that much amount of data that the traditional systems can store or process the data efficiently. Okay, large volumes of data, correct. Okay, and now let us talk about the measure. Data is measured in bits, correct? One, one bits and bytes. You can see here from the bytes. One byte is collection of eight bits. What is a bit? A bit is either one or a zero. Okay. So this is the measure. Now up to gigabytes or terabytes, the traditional systems are very efficient in storing our process. But beyond terabytes, it is a challenge. And the data is beyond terabytes. It is a challenge for the traditional RDBMS systems. So now I can give one more definition. When the data is ranging beyond terabytes, I can call it as big data. And is reaching petabytes. So using a big data technology, you can efficiently either store or process any database. You have two options. You have to store the data and you have to efficiently retrieve the data. Efficiently retrieving the data means it should not take longer time. Okay, if I do a, you know, if I do a query and I want to wait for eight hours, it is well and good. But that is not which uh, we expect, right? That is not the performance. You always require the results then and there itself. So that is the reason if the data is in terabytes or petabytes, it is not that easy to store or retrieve the information with traditional systems. That is the reason we have big data technologies. There are many technologies in the market and Hadoop is the popular one. Because of many factors. 
Okay, we will see all of them. Okay, so this is the word measure of data. Now, there are something called three V's of big data, which are the parameters that define big data. Okay, so let us try to understand each of them in detail. Volume, velocity, and variety. Okay, few of them Nandana mentioned, but let us see them in detail. So, these are called three V's of big data. We have volume, velocity, and variety. First, let us try to understand volume. Volume is, okay, what is volume? So, for this, I'll try to give one simple example. Yahoo introduced its mail, mail service, which is called Yahoo Mail, in 1997. Okay, okay I remember having a Yahoo Mail account in uh, 2002. Okay, but you know, it introduced it, uh, it's a uh, Yahoo mail service in 1997. I think it was in, on October 8 or uh, 9. Okay, and uh, do you know what is the initial mail storage capacity given by Yahoo to the Yahoo mail? Anyone? Or can you make a rough guess? What was the initial storage capacity? What was the initial mail storage capacity given by Yahoo Mail? Was it around 1 MB? Um, no, it is 5 MB. Okay. 5 MB is very less, right? So it is like you get a number of mails, you need to take a, uh, take a backup until unless you don't get a new mail. And if you get a mail with some images in it, that means if the mail itself is having 5 MB, of uh, images, then until you delete that mail or you take a backup of that mail, you don't get this, right? So initial storage capacity given by Yahoo for its Yahoo mail account was 5 MB, 5 MB. Now, uh, the, everyone continued having Yahoo accounts, right? You don't have any options. People had Yahoo accounts. But in uh, this continued till 2004 until Google launched its mail account, mail service, which is called Gmail. Okay, Gmail, which was introduced in 2004. And can you imagine the initial mail storage capacity given by Gmail? It was 1 GB. So it was like wonder how Google is able to manage to give 1 GB of storage for individual mail account. There will be millions of mail accounts. Even one person can have two to three mail accounts. Okay? So how Google is able to give 1 GB when any other system is not able to provide? Okay, It was like a surprise to everyone. And believe me, within a span of one year, by 2005, everybody shifted their mail accounts to Gmail. Even today, you see almost all mail accounts in Gmail. Later, Yahoo has upgraded its storage also. Later. But that is a different thing. Why would I change? Why would I shift from Gmail? When I get almost it now, and nowadays it is 2 GB. Right? So why should I now change my mail account? Unless, right? You don't, you don't uh, really need to delete any mail in Google for, especially for storage. If you want to sort, or you want, if you want to delete some unnecessary mails, it is upon you. But really, do you bother for storage and take a backup? I don't remember doing any day in Gmail till today, okay? So, volume is a very important factor. We all prefer. You don't really effort, try to delete the mails or, you know, think of storage. Even in today's phones, mobiles, you want unlimited storage everywhere, right? That is the reason we have Drive. Google gives 15 GB to their drive which is free of cost and beyond that it is very nominal even if you want to add it, right? So the, the volume, what I want to say here is volume is a very important factor. So once 
No, if there was no nothing, it was when there was no chance, people continued with Yahoo mail accounts. Once you have Gmail now, nobody bothers to go back to any other mail service. And now let us try to discuss about the second parameter, which is velocity. What is velocity? See, if you have data, if you are able to store it efficiently, that is not the only thing. You need to process it on time. Okay, I'll buy some servers and I can really store about bits of information in that, which is fine. But if you are not able to retrieve on time, let us try to see an example for this. Uh, let me go to one of the drives in my machine. Okay. Uh, let me go to E drive and I search with a keyword called Hadoop. Okay. And I observe the time taken. Ten seconds completed, it is still searching. Right? You can see the clock. Almost okay. Here it was twelve seconds. Okay. I retrieved two forty five items. What is the capacity of this drive? It is two hundred GB. In two hundred GB in twelve seconds of time, I retrieved two forty five items. Okay, let me make it here. So uh I got 245 items or such results within a span of 12 seconds in 200 GB of storage. Now I want to do the same thing in Google. Can you see this? Okay, so see this. It is even less than half a second and you got two crore 60 lakh results. Let me put this here. Right? And in what amount of storage it is searching? It is searching some petabytes of information. If you compare this two, it is like a very clear that Google is using some other system. In my system, it is uh, the operating system is Windows, which uses a different file system. Wherein Google uses a different file system. Correct? When you see the main, when you see the storage part or the processing part, it is very clear that Google is not using a traditional database technology for storage as well as processing. Do you really imagine, you know, typing something for search in Google and you need to wait? or have a cup of coffee and come back. Not at all, right? In such case, you never look into it. You want the results instantaneously. And look at one more thing here. It is not just, you know, the structured data it, it has searched. You have images, you have books, you have videos, and all this when you say Hadoop. So it is, it just didn't search among only the data. It searched among the images, books, videos also. Okay, with the keyword Hadoop. Okay, now let us try to, so that is the reason. Let us also try to understand what is variety. Variety means types of data. What are the categories in which broadly we can classify the data? We have structured data. semi-structured data and structured data. Structured data, that data which can be represented, <coughs> excuse me, that data which can be represented in the form of a table is called structured data. That means it should have different number of columns. structured data which is partially structured like XML files, log files, etc. 
What is an XML file? Uh, why, why do you call it semi-structured? XML file, you cannot really interpret any structure out of it because XML file contains all tags. But there is one thing in common. Suppose, uh, let, let me take a configuration tag. If you have an opening tag here, you're going to have a closing tag. Also, within this, if you have a name tag, you can have some name here. You cannot really, uh, you know, predict anything out of, you cannot make out any structure to pass this. But one thing is common. If wherever, whenever you have an opening tag, you will have a closing tag, which, may, which gives partial structure for this, to pass this file. Right? That is the reason it comes into the category of a semi-structured data. Similarly, log files, log files contain a lot of information. You really cannot make out anything out of it. But every log file is going to contain timestamp followed by some, let me take the current time, IST, some, some time, okay? And also you have milliseconds. Some seconds and then followed by milliseconds. And here you have a lot of information. Okay, a lot of information is here. But what makes it easy to, uh, you know, you know, retrieve the file is the date and timestamp. For sure, every log file is going to have that. So that that is the reason log files come under the category of semi-structured data. What about unstructured data? Unstructured data lot of data in this world is all unstructured only. Right? So here, it is very important. But when you come to traditional systems, it is really a challenge to process or store unstructured information. What is unstructured information? Whatever we do in our, uh, you know, um, whatever we use in our regularly, in our daily life, like PDF documents. PDF documents, Word documents, social networking chats, audio files, video files, everything, everything, else everything except structured and unstructured is all, structured and semi-structured is all unstructured information. So the traditional systems are not that efficient when you know in when you try to store across such structured information. But we have just seen Google has easily searched among these also. The search results include images, videos, and there are many other options still. Right? So now that is the reason they say. The volume, velocity, and variety are three parameters of big data. Why? It is not just store, we have to process. It is not just processing the one type of information. You need to process all the types of information. That makes the big data technology really very popular. It can not only store structured or semi-structured data, but quite efficiently it can also store and process unstructured information. Okay, when you see all this, definitely one thing is, what makes it clear is, Google is not using a traditional database or file system. Correct? Google is using some different system. Okay, we'll come to it later. So everybody, it was like, a, um, you know, uh, everybody was in a surprise, like, why, how Google is able to give that much of storage? how it is able to efficiently search so much of information in no time, how the search engine is working, and how this different types of data is being handled. So it nobody knew it until 2005, until 2005, wherein Google released its first paper saying, that the file system it is using is called GFS. GFS is Google File System. 
which was released in 2005. Okay, so the, okay, what is there in GFS? We will come to it a bit later. Okay, let us go to the presentation. So now clear three Vs of big data, correct. What Nandana said is all correct, but you know, uh, she was mentioning it is all unstructured data, but it is not just unstructured, you also have different types of data. So that makes really, you know, these three parameters really um, very important parameters for big data. Okay. Now, let us try to understand. The GFS was released, right? So, let us try to understand how the GFS was. But before that, let us try to understand what is the traditional approach. Traditional approach is something you have a centralized system. When I say traditional approach, I'm talking about RDBMS system, right? So, here you have an RDBMS and there is a system and user interfaces with the system. So, here there is a limit. When you come to RDBMS system, there is a limit. So, say say for some 500 terabyte. Now when, once the limit is over, once this limit of storage is over, you need to take a backup. And the backup server is not readily available for such. For any sort of processing, right? Once you take a backup, you don't call it active, it is backup server only. You need to connect whenever required, but it is not readily available entire time for processing or for retrieving the data. It is not available. Correct? So this is the traditional approach. So GFS uses a different approach. This was the Google solution. It is not just a system, but you have a collection of computers. What is commodity hardware? A cheaper hardware. Relatively cheaper. You need not really invest in high expensive servers when you are going for a big data solution. Okay, so this was Google solution based on which Hadoop was developed. Same architecture in Hadoop. Okay, based on this solution, Hadoop was developed. So this was, uh, you know, the person, Doc Cutting and his team developed this Hadoop project. So, uh, by the <clears throat> so why the name Hadoop is like you know his when he was developing the project his son was playing with the toy elephant uh, yellow color toy elephant that that icon you can see everywhere when you check with Hadoop right so his son named it as Hadoop and this person he found it relevant to his project and he named it as Hadoop. The project was funded by Yahoo and it was given for Apache Software Foundation to make it open source. Generally, all the open source softwares are from Apache only, right? So this project was given for Apache in 2006. Okay, so this was the history of Hadoop. Now let us try to understand the benefits of Hadoop are big data. Okay, so you know benefits, I cannot restrict it to a single slide. There are in the many benefits. I can take the entire session one hour discussing on the benefits of big data. Okay, it is used everywhere. I would like to, I would like to give one example for this. See, suppose um, some three years back, I got some medical, uh, uh, you know, requirement. Like I got, some, say, I got some fever, and I visited one of the hospital. Uh, they really treated me well, and within one week, I, you know, I was relieved. Uh, you know, so after three years when I get the same symptoms, what is the immediate thing that comes into my mind? I want to rush to the same hospital, hoping that the same doctor who treated me some three years back is there. Okay, so when I rush to the same hospital, so first of all, let us try to understand. The same doctor being there is very rare. They keep on changing. Okay, even if the same doctor is there, what is the guarantee that he's going to recognize you? Okay, so first thing is always they would like to know the history. Definitely three years back, it is very rare that you carry all the medical prescriptions. What if you don't have any history with you? You don't have the prescriptions with you. So what is the first thing you go there? You go there and ask. So I came to you three years back. So 
I remember, no? Do you have my data? It is the first thing you ask, right? In the reception or some team in the hospital. So what is the what is the usual reply they give us? No, ma'am, or sir, because we take a backup for every six months. So you say you come, you have come before three years, so your data is not there. So altogether, it is like a fresh record now because even though if the doctor is there, he is not aware of your history. The you know you need to maintain the physical medical prescriptions, okay, which is not always comfortable. You know, years together, how we are going to maintain? Even if you maintain, it is just one copy. You don't have the entire history there, right? So, so if, what is this? Every six months they are taking a backup because they are using a traditional system which has certain limit. So once the limit is over, once the system approaches the limit, they take a backup. Right? So it is altogether new. In fact, you need not go to the same hospital again. Because your data is not there. So altogether, even if the doctor is old, he needs your medical history. So altogether, the searches begin from the beginning. From the beginning. Correct? Now, what if your data is readily available? Once you they, they type your mobile number or your name, if the entire history is available, aren't you very happy? Because, see, how many people have benefited by this? Obviously, the patient, the doctor, he need not do all the checking from the beginning. He knows he has all your medical history in front of you. Even if the doctor changes, even if he is a new doctor, still it is the same. He has all the history before him, right? And as you know, the number of hits to the hospital rise because they are going to maintain all your history. So in future also, when you have anything, you will immediately rush to the hospital and you will promote also to others, right? So this is, the, this, is not, this is just a simple example. And these days we have n number of such examples we are experiencing in our day-to-day -day life. Suppose in a popular e-commerce website like Amazon, I try to shop something and I just put in the card thinking that the price is high. So whenever I log into some social net, uh, networking websites like FP or Twitter, I get a small ad there. Things you are interested are on discount. So how does the system know? See, suppose if I purchased and the system is capturing, it is well and good. I don't even put in the cart, but still system is capturing the data. That means every moment on the app is being captured. How it is possible? Only with a big data technology. Every moment on the site is captured means, imagine there should not be any limit for storage. And also whatever it is capturing is all readily available. Correct? So it is not just these two. There are n number of benefits in internet search, in finance, in e things work, business, informatics, physics, biology, chemistry. Environmental search, everywhere, you have a number of benefits. Also, when you use a big data technology like Hadoop or any big data technology, as you can see, it, it uses a cheaper hardware. Your system is not costly. Okay, so there are n number of benefits. Okay, let us move further. Let us come to discussing of the architecture. As I mentioned you, the storage, by, you know, any database technology contains two things. We have a storage and processing. It is not just storage that is important and the processing is equally important. That is what we have understood. Okay. The storage part here in Hadoop is called HDFS. HDFS, which was developed from GFS. GFS is Google File System. Based on that, HDFS was developed, which is Hadoop Distributed File System. Why it is called Distributed File System? Because it is distributed among the cluster of computers. Okay, and the processing part is called MapReduce. The processing part is called MapReduce. 
okay that is what you can see here okay map reduce and hdfs hdfs is the storage map reduce is the processing part forget a moment about these two we can talk about it later okay let us also go to this slide so this is hadoop distributed file system on top of it you have a distributed layer like map reduce now what are we doing as a part of this course we are going to understand hdfs architecture in detail followed by map reduce programming you need to define the processing right so storage is something given by the framework you need not do anything in that but what about processing processing is something that we have to do based on the requirement correct so when you talk about processing we do the map reduce processing in java map reduce the framework itself is developed in java hadoop is developed in java so the processing of data we need to understand or uh, you know we need to program in java for this core java concept And Scala also, but Java is native. That is the reason nobody does not produce programming in any other language because Java being native, it is very efficient in processing or analyzing large volumes of data. Performance is very good. Okay, but everyone, <clears throat> but everyone cannot do programmers in Java, right? So they really need a certain level, and also programming in Java takes a lot of time and more number of lines of code. So that is the reason they have introduced some of the components for processing of data which is quite simple compared to java which is one of them is pig pig is also a processing layer similarly also when you want to analyze some data it's quite easy when you have data in the form of tables so that you can you know query the table using SQL like queries. See everybody can't be either proficient in Java or Pig. You have SQL developers. So the current team you may have a lot of SQL team. Okay. So also when you try to visualize the data in the form of a table and try to query it, the analysis becomes very easy. Correct? So that is the reason we have a component called hype. Okay, so what are we doing as a part of this course? We try to understand and program map reduced programming in Java. Similarly, Pig and Hive also. What are we doing? We set up the environment in the class only. Okay, so through VM, we install a guest operating system, Linux flavored operating system. On top of that, we install JDK and Hadoop. Hadoop will not work without JDK since it is developed in Java. Okay. So once that is done, we are going to install Peak. Okay, installation, I'll share one of your machine and uh, I'll guide you with the steps. So we are going to do step by step in the class. Every day class will be recorded. The recorded session will be shared with you. And the class notes, whatever I do in the class will be shared with you. Okay. And so once the installation is done, I'm going to show practicals on my PC. Okay, on my machine, I'm going to show you the practicals and the class notes will be shared. So like this, we are gonna install Peak, do the practicals in Peak, Hive, do practicals in Hive. Okay, this is about processing layers, as you can see here, the processing layers, Hive, Peak, and. Apart from that, this Hadoop distributed file system stores the data in the form of files. But for any sort of transactions, we require data in the form of tables, right? For this, we have one more database on top of HDFS, which is called HBase. We call this as NoSQL database. Okay, we call this as NoSQL database. So we are also going to see this. We are going to install HBase and we see hands-on in HBase. Apart from this, we are also going to learn Scoop. Scoop is a tool 
which is used to transfer the data between RDBMS and HDFS. From RDBMS to HDFS, from HDFS to RDBMS and so on. So we are going to install Scoop and see hands-on in Scoop. So these are the practical ones we are going to see in this course. Other than this, we have some theory components. Okay, we have a process uh, for streaming of data. We have from for workflows. We have a tool called Ozi. We also see Yarn. We have questions in Hadoop. Hadoop one dot x and two dot x. We are going to do all this in one dot x. So what is two dot x? Two dot x is called Yarn. What are the main differences? What is the role of a developer using Yarn? This we will see in a class. Also some discussion about NoSQL databases and you know comparison of architecture of the popular ones like MongoDB and Cassandra. All this we can see in the theory class. Other than this, I can also spare one class for resume writing. You can share one of your resume with me and we can discuss about that in the class. And one real-time project related interview discussion. What I am doing in my project, what are project related interviews. So all of them go hand in hand with resume writing as well as the project level interview discussion. So other in this, when we discuss my practice in Java, I'm going to give one assignment. One assignment. Then after completion of these components, I'm also going to give one another assignment. You can term it as POC, which has, you know, um, which can collectively, you know, uh, combine all these components. So that would be a very good exercise. Okay. So that would be the second assignment. Apart from this, whenever I'm, you know, when I, whenever I complete one component, whatever relevant material I have, I'm going to share with you guys. Okay. And assignment, you can try it out. The code will be shared otherwise. Okay, so this is all about the course. So now you guys tell me if you have any queries regarding the course or anything. Uh, uh, hello, Nikita? Yeah, hi Nandana, tell me. Uh, so, uh, do we need to know basic Java uh, to work on Pig and Hive? No, uh, to work on Pig and Hive, no, not required. But Core Java, see, um, if you are not comfortable in Core Java, I can share the material. So you can go through that. Only the object-oriented programming concepts, because it is not just I am gonna, you know, uh, I will keep explaining and try to introduce you to the code. So the basic concepts is what you have to be clear in. So I already have some recordings, so I will share it across with you guys. Just go through them. If you have any queries also, we can discuss. And uh, how many days is this course? Like, uh... It will roughly take um, some 35 hours. It depends on the installations. If you see, sometimes we get a challenge, right, in one of the installations. So there it will take two classes or three classes will go in the installation itself. If everything goes fine, uh, in 30 to 35 classes we can wind up. Okay. So, okay. And in real time, uh, 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 like, do you have to work on the installation as well? Like, no, real time we don't work on the installation. Um, admin team is gonna take care of that. But uh, here, uh, as a Hadoop developer, you need to understand some concepts for installation, like setting the path in one of the files. Okay, when it is Hadoop installation, what are the configuration files? Because they form some interview questions as well. So installation, doing installation is a very good exercise 
it is also going to cover, I can say, some 30% of admin costs because blindly we are not doing the installation. We are going to understand what you are doing, right? So step by step. So that is the real exercise. But real-time installations we are not doing. And uh, what data are we going to work on while uh, in the training? In the training, we work on some sample data only. And is Scoop an ETL tool? No, it is not ETL tool. Um, it is a big data tool only. Okay, so anything else? So uh, here we will be working on all the uh, no SQL, uh, no SQL, right? Uh, not the SQL. It will be all yes, there. yes. In Hive we have SQL like queries which is called HQL, but um, in HBase, uh, HBase is a NoSQL database, right? So there the commands, everything is different, syntax, semantics, everything is different. So we are going to see that. Now SQL database is HBase where we are going to look into. And these days there are a lot of, a lot coming right like Big Hive and uh, some, many are there. So most of the companies, do they work? See, actually there are, there are 30 plus components on Hadoop. But here we are discussing the components that are part of Hadoop ecosystem. Okay, so the popular ones is what we are discussing on. So most of the, any, uh, you know, any job description will contain these components. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason the course is designed this way. Uh, that's all. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, um, okay then. Um, you can let the coordinator know about your feedback and uh, uh, regarding the timings and all uh, other stuff, the coordinator will co can coordinate with you guys, okay? So you can give your feedback and uh, once everything goes fine, we can, uh, you know, start the classes. So maybe now uh, from tomorrow we have a vacation. So maybe once the vacation is done, we can have the, you know, one, uh, we can have the sessions going on. Okay, so regarding that, the coordinator, whoever you are able to give information on that. Okay, so see you always. Okay, have a nice time. And uh, well, okay, we all, we can we are, we will all meet in the next session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thank you.